Here is another one of our garage building videos. This is a 24 foot long by 20 foot wide garage and it is going to be a two story. And I would also like to point out that these garages, all of them in this series, might need you to hire a structural engineer. These are only building examples of the way they can be built. However, depending upon where you are located in the world, you might need to add more structural strength to these buildings. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. We are going to have a few more footings in here because we are going to have a couple of concentrated loads. So we're going to have a beam in the floor going across here. And then we are going to have a beam going over the front of the garage. And then we are going to have a couple of more footings over here. This one here will help to support the floor framing. And this one here will transfer some of the load from the roof ridge down to the foundation. A few modifications to the slab and the wall framing. Here are the two posts that are going to be supporting the floor beam, along with our ridge post, along with the two footings in the front. So we are going to have a garage beam here. And if this is going to be enough, great. If not, I went ahead and put another beam in here. It's going to be in the floor over this and the load will be transferring down to the corners of the building foundation. And even though I have this as a 4x12, you could always make this a 6x12 or larger, along with making the footings larger and then maybe putting in a 4x6 or a 4x8 post here. And let's not forget that I'm doing all of these different garages. To provide you with different examples, you can mix and match with a lot of the other videos in the series. So a 4x4 post here, 4x4 post over there, along with the posts that we're using to support the floor framing. And then I simply added a few more studs here on each side to transfer the load from the floor framing also. Next up, let's go ahead and add our floor framing. And you can see here the beam that's going to be supported by the two posts, along with the other floor framing component. So a doubler here, we're going to use a beam here, and then another beam here, another beam here to create our stairwell. And again, a view of the beam and the post. And I made this a larger beam because I'm kind of providing another option in here that you will see later on when I install a post to help support the ridge beam. And then a view of the 4x12. This is a beam that will help to transfer the load from the roof ridge instead of transferring everything to the garage framing header. Another view of the corner there. And then of course we have 12 inch centers here, 12 inch on center, two by 12. And then they switch to 16 inches on center with the shorter spans over here. And even though I'm using two by 12, you might need to use larger lumber. Next up, let's go ahead and install our three quarter inch floor sheathing. And don't forget that the engineer might want a wider strip here, which will require you to cut these pieces back and then install something about 16 inches wide or 24 inches wide along with the load transferring from the floor down into the framing studs on both sides here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stairwell. And for those of you wondering if this is going to be a problem because the stair stringers are going to be kind of hanging into the garage and whether or not you'd be able to park a vehicle there, let's not forget that I made this four foot larger than a standard 20 foot garage and that the front of the car will usually fit underneath the stairway without any problem. Next up, let's go ahead and install our stair landing. Going to be doing this a little different. And we're going to be using 4x10s and 2x10s. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanted to create a storage area underneath the stairway. So I'm going to leave this end open. And when I leave this end open, it might require you to put two layers of Type X drywall underneath the stair stringers or you to use inch and an eighth stair treads because you're probably going to need a two hour fire rating in this area here. Let's go ahead and install our stair stringers and we will be attaching them with pins. However, you could always install anchor bolts here 
when you're pouring the concrete. Next up, let's take a look at the upper stringer connections and how it will be connecting to the landing beam. And for those of you who aren't familiar, I do have another channel. It's called Stair Building, and you can find a link to that at our website or type in Stair Building on YouTube. You're probably going to pop it right up. And I am planning on breaking down these stairs. And even though I won't be providing you with all of the information you need to build them, I will be providing you with a little more information if you're going to do something something like this. And for those of you wondering what this is, this is a drywall spacer and there will be one on each side of the stairway so that we can slide our drywall down in between the wall framing and the stair stringer so we don't need to notch around it when installing our drywall notch around the steps. And here we have our three quarter inch space. And you can always make this space smaller if you want to. If you're gonna use half inch drywall and you think you can get away using a half inch strip, go for it. A view from the bottom where the stringers are going to connect to the beam. And of course here we have a four by 12 hanger for our four by 12 beam. Take a look at it from the other side there. And let's go ahead and remove the floor sheathing to provide you with a view of how the stringers are going to connect to this beam here. And even though I do not have a post to beam connector here, you can install one or use straps or use whatever your engineer will recommend. Let's go ahead and install our risers and our treads. Take another look at the top of the stairs and the floor framing before we cover it up here. Again, 12 inches on center, 16 inches on center. Four by 12, four by 12, four by 12. This is about an eight by 12, and then we have a four by 12 over here. Next up, let's go ahead and install our sheathing and then our wall framing. And we're going to be able to set the walls on top of the floor in this example. Not like the first video, because we're going to use a ridge beam to create a vaulted ceiling, which will provide us with plenty of headroom for this area. And if we didn't use the ridge beam, we would need to install rafter ties that would go all the way across providing us with an unusable area up here. And in this example, I have four foot walls. Someone pointed out that if you use four foot walls, then they will be easy to drywall. Thanks for pointing that out. And I believe in our first example, I used three foot walls along with balloon framing. So here I made the walls a little bit taller to provide us with a little more headroom up here. Next up, let's go ahead and install the other walls. And I think in our first example, I didn't have framing plates on the top or blocking. And most of the time you need to block a wall that is over 10 foot. And I believe the distance from about here to here was just a little bit shy of 10 foot, but I went ahead and blocked it anyway. View of the inside of the wall there. And then let's go ahead and go to the outside again. Next up, let's go ahead and install the ridge beam. And here's the post I was talking about. This post will help transfer some of the weight above down to the floor beam and quite possibly reduce the size of the ridge beam. And even though I'm using a 4x12 here, something like this might require a glue lamb or even something that might need to be five and a half inches wide or larger, depending upon whether you're going to be dealing with snow loads. And for those of you that I might have lost somewhere in the video trying to figure out what in the heck I was talking about with all of the concrete footings and the additional beams, you can see here where the weight from the roof, the ridge beam, is going to be transferred through this post here and then down to the beam and then down through this post to the footing on both sides. And that's also going to take place on the other side where we have a continuous post going all the way down to the concrete footing. And since this beam is going to be 24 foot long and you might not be able to get those types of beams in your area, if you do put a post here, you can always break it and then maybe get an eight footer and a 16 footer. And again, I don't have a lot of hardware in this video, but something like this is probably going to require a post to beam connection also, along with a good example of how the post is going to transfer the weight down to the floor beam and then down through the post to the concrete footings. And again, that will happen on both sides. So in this garage building example, I think we're going to have a beam here, the ridge beam and the beam in the front. 
that might require structural engineering. Let's go ahead and put our floor sheathing back on along with our roof framing. And our roof rafters are going to be spaced 16 inches on center along with our lookouts and our shaped blocks. And this is the same pitch and roof except for the ridge beam that I had in the first video. So we got the same shaped blocks, the same outlookers, and the same roof pitch. And I also went ahead and shaped the top blocks also and the extension here to pick up the fascia board. And even though I don't have it, you will need to install straps over the top of something like this instead of installing collar ties. However, you could always install collar ties instead of the straps. So you might need about a 16 inch strap or a two foot strap, and that would connect to every other rafter or every third rafter to provide you with a four foot on center spacing. A nice view of how the ridge beam and all of this connects together. Next up, let's go ahead and head to the bottom. Get a view of it here, how the roof rafters sit on top of the lower wall. And of course, how the roof rafters sit on top of the ridge beam. And you could always drywall under the rafters and around the beam or purchase a rough sawn or a resawn beam if you want something that's going to be rough and maybe something that you could stain or paint and not drywall. A view of the posts from the other side, our blocks. And of course, our blocks will provide us with a nice surface for the roof sheathing to attach to. Next up, let's head to the front of the garage and then install our fascia board and then the roof sheathing. Now the last thing I want to go over in the video will be the stairs and for our fire blocking we can simply nail a flat piece here. We don't need to have a shaped block. Remember your job is to block the air or the fire and something like this will work just fine shaped blocks going up to our flat blocks going around the landing and these blocks are to prevent air or fire from going around the landing however we won't need those blocks on the other side but we will need a wall so i went ahead and framed a wall here so that we could enclose the stairwell because you're probably going to need part of the stairwell to be concealed so that we can create a fire exit from above and of course that will be depending upon your local building codes and of course here's a nice view of how we're going to be able to create another storage area here and a view of the wall above and how it's going to be formed so that we can drywall a flat surface here. Now I also want to point out that you could always make this wall three and a half inches longer so that the drywall from this wall finishes up even with the wall here. And this might provide you with a better view of it here because otherwise the drywall is going to come down here, come around here, and then come down. Where if I would have extended this three and a half inches, the wall would basically come straight down or at least come down, stop here, and be even without a jog in it. And on the other side, we will be installing a guardrail and another wall here. And that is the end of this video here. Do not forget that this is part of a series, as I mentioned earlier in the video, and that you can change some of the other parts. For example, you can decrease or increase the roof pitch, raise or lower some of the walls, make some of the walls wider, along with using a different set of stairs for your garage project. So make sure you check out the rest of the videos and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video.